Thank you so much for joining us, MEC. Um, it's a pleasure to have you with us this afternoon on Inside Education. Thank you very much, and good afternoon. Um, so, MEC, it's almost 17 months since you were appointed MEC, and there's high expectations from people of Limpopo. Um, in terms of, because you are rocked by textbook scandals, um, also with the bribery allegations against your predecessor, are you happy with the progress you have made so far in the months that you've been appointed MEC of Education in Limpopo? Uh, let, let's correct uh, some things. One, uh, the issue of textbook have long been dealt with before yes. I even came. Uh, even last year, you know, by November, and all the schools have received their books. And secondly, I'm not sure what scandal are you talking about, but what I can say is that my predecessor uh, put some foundation in terms of the education department that we would want to be. So since I arrived here, uh, I've been very busy trying to make sure that we improve uh, quality teaching and learning. Uh, I'm always at school, for sure you know, always at schools, trying to motivate learners. Yesterday I was at Mogala Kuena, talking to the teachers, talking to the learners, talking to SGBs to say, you know, together we can be able to do more and support our learners. One of the things that I've uh, come up with is to eradicate the pit latrines. As you know, uh, we are doing 250 schools. Unfortunately, we were disturbed by COVID-19. But since level three, when we were allowed to go on, we have uh, appointed contractors, they are on site. I'm actually receiving messages that, MEC, this one is complete, this one is complete, and the progress, I'm very happy with it. And secondly, we had a problem with our implementing agents in terms of uh, fixing our schools and also public works in terms of uh, fixing our damage, storm damage school, 123 of them. Uh, the Exco of Limpopo have given us permission to be able to appoint project management unit and panel of consultants so that we can accelerate uh, the infrastructure. Unfortunately, uh, some of the plans uh, COVID-19 came, came on us, we could not complete them. But also we've completed the e-learning strategy. I think uh, COVID-19 have taught us that we can't depend on buildings. We really have to also go online in terms of equipping the learners of Limpopo. We are done with the strategy. We have costed it, it needs a lot of money. I wish Solidarity Fund can give us. But the, the Exco of Limpopo have approved it and the Provincial Command Council have approved it. We have presented it to Treasury. I'm also send, selling it to many companies. Uh, I've spoken to MTN, remember they donated 160 tablets which we gave to learners in their Kobe. And yeah. last year we took from our budget, we bought more than 8,000 uh, uh, tablets and 1,106 interactive board. And you know, from next year, we are introducing uh, robotics and data coding in 106 schools. As I'm talking to you now, we are training them and also putting the relevant infrastructure in place. We are resuscitating eight agricultural high schools because you know secu food security is going to be a problem in the future. Uh, when we expropriate land, uh, we'll, we'll land uh, we'll farm on it. So we are preparing learners to be able to do that. We also want to resuscitate our 26 technical schools. We can't keep on producing learners who pass metric and don't have anything to do. We must produce learners when they finish, they're able to take work and have the relevant skills that are needed by the economy. So we are going to resuscitate them and make sure that we prepare our learners very well. We also want to resuscitate the 16 Dina Lady School. Limpopo is known for its quality in terms of math, science and technology. So we want to expand it in the 16 uh, schools uh, so that we can continue to supply South Africa with learners that are good in physical science, math, and technology. Mm. And MEC, um, the 2020 academic year has been stormed, especially because of uh, COVID-19. How is your province doing in terms of completing the academic year? Hey, 
Yeah, no, yeah, that is it's what they were asking me at the legislature also. As you know, our province is a rural province. And as a result, when we close schools on the 18th of March because of COVID, uh, the ones in Quintile 1, 2, 3 could not access uh, uh, their classes online, unlike in other schools. So we had to use radios, TVs, uh, community radio stations also, just try to make them catch up. But as you know, a great one learner, uh, don't listen to the radio. You know, they will listen for five minutes and sleep. So uh, it is not normally the best one. They prefer learning by pictures, you know, the TV and all yeah. other things. But after we came back from uh, lockdown, uh, we really int intensified our teaching in our schools. I was pleased yesterday uh, at uh, Siputi School, uh, the teachers were telling me, MEC, we are not only doing Saturday classes, we are also doing Sunday classes. And they are not paid anything. Uh, they are just coming on board to assist our learners. So we are busy at the moment assisting our learners. We've got afternoon classes, Saturday classes. Today I was talking to the MEC for health. We want to take some of them to Kempi because they are done with their pre preliminary examination. So we'll yeah. see where they lack and be able to concentrate on where they are lacking. Uh, I think mm -hmm. up to now, they are very positive and they are ready and I'm pleased also. Yeah, I mean, there's only less than three weeks left before they get into examinations. Um, are you saying you are quite happy with the preps that have been done so far? And do you, do you think they're quite ready to get into it? Remember the grade 12s came earlier uh, than the other grades. And one of the positive things uh, that I've noticed in our learners and teachers, especially the grade 12s, in rural areas, they value education. They know that if they pass their metric, some of them are going to break the cycle of poverty at their household. They're going mm -hmm. through challenges, but you can see uh, they've got torn uniforms and torn shoes, but they are clean and they're at school and trying to say, MEC, we want to go to the university next year and be able mm -hmm. to make our parents proud but also we want to be something in life. And I always say to them, where you come from must never determine where you are going. Uh, you just have to concentrate very hard. Some of us are from poor families, but the reason why we are MECs today is because of education. So I always yeah. give them hope uh, to say, no matter how difficult it is, you can make it. So, and I can see they are ready to make it. Yeah, and let me say, uh, it's, it's, it's quite known that Limpopo hasn't um, performed that well in recent years in terms of metric results. Are you confident this year that uh, we're going to get good marks? And uh, what's your uh, expectations in terms of the metric pass rate for 2020? Let me correct you again. Somebody was asking me that question just now. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you read things in percentage, they give a different perspective. Limpopo have always had many bachelors. You have seen even in the top 30, Limpopo had nine. Those who were number one had nothing in the top, uh, top 30. But also yeah. remember, the learners that we are presenting for examination uh, in Limpopo, you know, uh, mm -hmm. there are more, you know, I think the third after Eastern Cape and KwaZulu Natal, you know. So you can't compare us with Free State that presents 30,000 learners when we present 150,000 learners. So if we work in percentage, let me give you this uh, glaring example. If you have 100 cows, you, send, you sell 50 cows. You have sold 50% and remain with 50%. If somebody yeah. have two cows and sell one, you know, he sold 50% and remain with 50%. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so the percentage is an issue. But when you look deeper into the results, Limpopo have always stopped in terms of uh, uh, mathematics, in terms of physical science, in terms of other subjects. So for me, it's more quality rather than competing on, on, on uh, percentages. If you have to go to numbers, Limpopo is always the first. But we are not going to be doomed. This Remember last year, we reached the new high. You know, yes. we breached the 72 uh, mark and then Limpopo reached the new high. 
So this year also, I'm more into quality. Actually, let's say to, to our staff, let's concentrate on building the foundation phase. Because if you have your foundation correct, you don't even have to do other things at the top there. If foundation can read, write, uh, read with understanding, we don't have to really put extra effort in doing that. I'm confident that Limpopo will still, in terms of numbers, not percentage, you know, uh, do well. Uh, I know we have the same complaint. MEC, of course, we have the same uh, A1, but uh, I, I, they're going to do well. Learners of Limpopo, I'm yeah. confident. Okay. And um, there have been a number of complaints from some schools like uh, Gabela Secondary School in Muleji uh, about the centralization of procurement of the PPE in schools uh, with principals and school governing bodies excluded from the procurement process. Do you have any regrets in terms of how the province, particularly your department, uh, handled the PPE procurement? For sure, you know, by now, we don't have any problem of procurement of PPEs in the education department of Limpop. You have never had any complaints about it. You see, the problem with uh, us or the challenges with us is that you are talking about 3,773 schools. Mm. How do you do the procurement in 3,773 points? As of now, there are schools who are not able to account for their norms and standards. But also, you know, if we buy in bulk, we get discounts. You see? So uh, I don't know why people want us to, you know, to buy five marks, three marks, there, 10 marks. We are going to lose a lot of money and we are going to have a problem of accountability. So they've got mm. norms and standards which they can be able to use for other things. What I can agree with them, and that's what we did in the Department of Education, is that the tenders for PPEs, Banaba Mugu benefited. Uh, the business people from Limpopo benefited. Mm. You know. Yeah. So, but you can't say we can be able to control 3,773 centers. It will just be a receipt for disaster. I have spoken to the public protector because they complained to the public protector. I said, public protector, in, 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 in our uh, department, and in terms of accountability, that's not how we deal with uh, I, I must still be accountable at the end of the day. But if I have to be accountable for 3,773 schools, you know, it will not be possible. There are some mm -hmm. SGBs who have used money, the norms and standards, uh, very bad. Uh, some who have uh, dismissed them, some who have taken them to court. So you would want to protect the learners at the end of the day. But we have mm -hmm. also said to them, in terms of COVID-19, some of the things that they will need, like your sanitizers, your cleaning materials, they can take them from the norms and standards, but they must still account. Yes. And uh, Basic Education Minister Nji Mutsaka has uh, recently announced a high number of school dropouts um, throughout the country. That's due to COVID. What is the situation in Limpopo as far as dropouts uh, of learners are concerned? In terms of Limpopo, the percentage is very high. In mm. grade 12, it's 0.4%. And it's because some of them uh, are learning from home. Remember, they have com comorbidities, and mm -hmm. then they, they apply, we give them permission to study from home. The teachers take the medicines homes, and also for marking and all other things. The mm -hmm. other ones, I think they are less than 3%, big with 19 and Corona. They decided to keep uh, their children back, which they are not many. Uh, for sure they've seen we don't have those cases. Maybe they will decide next year or when to bring their children back. There's nothing that we can do about that. The other ones, you know, social issues. If learners are at home, things, but uh, we, we said to the circuit and the district, they must trace each and every learner who's not at school and give us a report to say where are they. But the problem is mainly I think in Houting they have 12% or so, but in Limpopo it's not much. That is why we are able to trace them and tell what is happening. 
others lose the names of people who are pregnant and others and what uh, and others uh, like if it is right to keep your learners at home but it's not a problem for Nicole. Yeah. And um, how many teachers with comorbidity, comorbidities rather, have applied to stay at home in Limpopo? And how has this affected uh, learning in the schools? Initially, uh, we had give, given concession to about 2,100 teachers uh, when we started in June, coming back from the 8th of June. But as situation improves now, uh, and you can see the numbers are down in Limpopo. They are even worse, you know. So mm -hmm. most of the teachers are back at work. Mm -hmm. So we don't have, we no longer have problem of shortage of teachers. We'll still need more teachers because remember, COVID nineteen come with a uh, social distancing. So in the yeah. class where we used to accommodate forty, now we accommodate twenty. So the other twenty would need other teachers. So it's not a commodity problem. We don't. We no longer have that problem. They are back at school. And how's the province doing in terms of uh, getting teachers, extra teachers, to come in and help as classes are more now uh, with less students in it? You can see the whole country we are fighting for, for those extra teachers. What we have done as Limpopo, we have said all the unemployed teachers must uh, register in the database of the district. Uh, mm -hmm. such that when there is a need, we don't have to advertise, we just uh, take them from the database. Like what happens when a teacher goes on maternity leave or on, on uh, when he's sick for a long time, uh, we just go to the database and then replace. Uh, but yeah, it's a problem because hey, we compete with others. And I think mm -hmm. in one way or the other, as COVID-19 stabilizes, will also stabilize. But we need to train more teachers we are actually thinking of opening a two teachers colleges in Limpopo, uh, the former mm -hmm. Mastec College and the Bombay, and start training our teachers, especially within the technical subject that we need yeah. most. Yeah. And let me see. that was... Corona didn't come with any textbook. I'm saying just that Corona did not come with any textbook, you know, where we can say, you know, and do some, some other things. So we just on the go, make a mistake, and then, you yeah. know and helping it, each other. Yeah, it's just learning along the way as you go. And let me say, um, according to Equal Education, a report by Equal Education, it says in the entire country, there's about 2 million children who are not being fed um, by the, na uh, the National School Nutrition Program. And uh, with them, the, a survey that they've done in Limpopo with th about 30% of children say they haven't received their food, especially because you are on a rotational program. How have you been dealing with this? Are you aware of this? Yes, I'm aware of it. If they, they're saying we're not feeding uh, the learners, are they saying now or during lockdown? Because remember, they, during lockdown, so it's, it's they went to court for us to yeah, so it's not based on a survey uh, no. in regards to the rotating of learners. So those that are not at school at a certain on a certain day are said to not be receiving meals. And uh, as far as we know, the department had said they will be um, making sure that everybody is fed during this time. You know what? Like you are rightly saying, everybody must be fed. But remember, some people. You know, even if you are poor, but you have your own pride, you yes. know, you would not necessarily walk a long distance to a school for a plate of of of, uh, of food. Uh, so it's like when during the lockdown, when uh, equal education forced us to feed learners, you know, we took the, the food at school. Learners just did not come, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, they are poor. But I mean, really, you can't say they must come for a plate of food. You know, so we, we, we feed in them. Uh, it's just that, yes, when they are at home, it's like during the weekend, who feed them? You know, yeah. during school holidays. And that's where we then have to work with departments like social development, where they are able to identify those families and then give them food parcels that they give to, to, to the vulnerable. Remember, we are feeding at school. You know, that is why. In, during the weekend, we don't feed, you know, and during school holidays, we don't feed, we feed at school. 
other departments like social development take over out of school in terms of weekends and school holiday. So people must not talk as if this is a new thing. You know, uh, we are experiencing this for the first time. It never happened in our, in our country. We, don't, we never fed during school holidays. We never fed during, during, uh, uh, during weekends. You know, but yeah. when we can, we will be able to do it. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, MEC. That is it from my side. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much.